Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Havoc here. Today, I will be teaching you how to make a banner for your YouTube channel for free. All I'm gonna say is you guys are in for a treat because in this tutorial, I'll be showing a lot of new tools, a lot of new devices for you to make your banner higher quality than in my previous tutorials. So I hope this tutorial does help you out. If it does, be sure to drop a like. Let's go for 250 likes. And if you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be pushing out a lot of new tutorials. And also we're getting really close to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for all the support. And with that being said, let's get straight into it. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on the first link in the description and that will take you to this page right here. And you're just gonna to wanna to click on new project right here. And we're gonna make this 2560 by 1440. And this is basically pixels per image. So I usually put it up to 300. Pretty much the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to Google and type in banner template and just click on the first result. Make sure it's 2560 by 1440 and just right click save image as. I already have it saved as you can see right here. Go back to photo P and all you have to do for this website is just click and drag and that's the beauty of photo P. Click on the move tool to place it right there. So basically this banner template just shows us where we wanna put our most valuable information such as our channel name and our social media. And we wanna put that and this darkest area right here. People on mobile devices that are viewing your channel will only see what is in the darkest area right here. People on the PC will see the full width right here. And most people actually don't view YouTube on the TV, so you really don't have to put anything in this bottom or top piece. It's really up to you. So one of the very first things I like to do is find and download a custom font that pretty much will go along with the theme I'm trying to evoke. I'm gonna be making a space theme banner so I'm gonna to wanna to find a font that kinda of goes along with that. So I'm gonna leave this link, it'll be the second link in the description, but that will take you to this page right here. And I'm gonna be using this font right here. You can just go to themes and you can choose any of these different categories. Now if you wanna use something space theme, we can go to sci-fi right here and you can just scroll down the list. Once you find something you like, all you have to do is just click this download button right here It'll start downloading a zip folder, just show in folder. And I'm just going to drag this onto my desktop, go back to photo P. All you have to do is just drag this into photo P and your fonts are loaded in. So all you have to do is press in this type tool right here, zoom in by holding the alt button and also scrolling in with our mouse. Make sure we're on the correct font, so Mandalore. I'm going to up the size to about 140, and I'm just gonna go ahead and type in my channel name. So if you go to the text layer right here, we can right click, go to blending options, and we can click on stroke right here. And when you click on the stroke right here, we can actually change a lot of different things. We can change the size, we can change the fill type. So I'm gonna change this to light blue click OK, and I think three is a pretty good size. I'm also gonna go ahead and add a gradient overlay. Make sure I click on this right here, and I'm just gonna change the color from white to really, really dark blue, something along those lines, and just click OK. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to make this text kind of 3D, and how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna right click, duplicate layer, drag this down and then right click again, go to blending options, take the stroke off, go to gradient overlay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to all black so that it acts as a shadow. And we're just gonna drag this layer down below the previous text layer and make sure it's somewhere around here. And it's really up to your preference. If you want to have a really thick 3D effect, you can do that. So obviously, as you can see, it doesn't look the best. There are obviously spots that are missing out of this 3D text. So what we can do is click on this pin tool right here, go to fill, change it to black, and just start filling in these areas that are missing. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for each letter. Okay, so before we merge anything, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I copy. So I'm gonna right click on this top layer, which is our top text right here. And I'm just gonna go to duplicate layer right here and drag it over. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select it, change the size to probably about 60. And I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate that layer again and drag it down here. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have this layer selected so you can make sure you have it selected if you click on it and it's moving. And we can also always hit Control Z to go back to our previous spot, but we're gonna go ahead and merge all of these different layers. As you can see, we've got each layer being each shape that we created. So we click and hold the shift button to select all of these different layers, right click and merge layers. So now you've got this entire text selected, it's all merged, so you can go ahead and just drag that to the center. And what we can do is we can right click, go to blending options, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add an outer glow of 100 opacity, and you can really change the color, you can change it to white, but I'm gonna have it a little darker blue, something something along those lines. And you can change the size, you can change the spread. So the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and find our social media. So you're gonna to wanna to go back to Google and type in whatever social media you're gonna to wanna to put on your banner, such as Discord or Snapchat, Twitter, etc. So just go ahead and type that in. And obviously what pops up is not transparent. What we can do is we can go to tools, go to color, and select transparent so that all the different options now are all transparent. Just click and drag and there's our Discord logo right here. Now when you scale down, you wanna hold the shift button or else the proportions will not stay the same. So we're just gonna to wanna to scale this down and drag it over to here. And I'm just gonna scale it down to just about the same size as our text right here and just click okay. Right click, go to blending options, select the stroke and select the gradient overlay and make sure it's on the dark blue, which is pretty much the same as our font right here and click okay. And I think that looks pretty good. So you're gonna wanna do the same thing for the other font right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select this text and select the Instagram, which I can also select by holding the control button and it will select both these layers. I can right click and go ahead and merge. So this is one layer and we can do the same thing with the Discord. You can hold control as well, right click, merge layers so that this is one layer as well. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is create these tabs that kinda just showcase our social media and make sure it doesn't get lost in the rest of the banner. So. We're gonna basically just go to this lasso tool right here, the polygonal lasso tool, click on it. And we're gonna start out on the outside of our banner and basically we're gonna try to make this tab go just below the text. So just click on the outside, make sure you hold the shift button so that it creates a straight line like so. And let's say it's a little below like so, you can go ahead and unclick the shift button, obviously. Just go ahead and click and we can just hold the shift button and there it is. It's pretty much aligned right there. And I would say right as we hit the edge of this logo, you can just go ahead and click. While holding the shift button, it'll create a 45 degree angle and we can even zoom in right here just to make sure we have it perfectly and just click right here, right on the edge. Make sure we're holding the shift button and just click around before we do anything, we want to go ahead and create a new layer. Drag that puppy all the way down to the bottom. Click on our brush tool. Change the size to all the way and change our color to white and click OK. Make sure our opacity is 100 and you're just gonna wanna go ahead and click hold and just drag it all the way around right here. And we can deselect the selection by going to the polygonal lasso tool and double clicking. And there we are. Go ahead and change the opacity right here 
and I typically usually put it at about 70. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this tab layer, duplicate the layer, and I'm just gonna drag this down and make sure it's aligned on this edge right here. And I'm just gonna be doing this just to give the illusion that this tab is sort of 3D. And what we can do obviously right here, it's a little messed up. So we can just go ahead, make sure we got both of these double clicked, go to edit, free transform, and we can just drag this so that nobody will know. Nobody will know that ever happened. Click on the move tool and it's all good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this copy layer right here, which is this bottom layer right here. And I'm gonna change the opacity to probably about 30. Click on both of the layers, right click, go to merge layers, and we can go ahead and duplicate that for the bottom. So we can go ahead and just drag it, go to edit, transform, flip horizontally, and also flip vertically so that it's on the opposite side like so. Just drag it over and drag it all the way to the bottom where it is pretty much in line with our template. So I'm just gonna click on the rectangle tool right here and just click and hold. And you don't have to be perfect. Just go ahead and click the move tool. And we're gonna move this shape all the way up to the top layer and we can just click and just drag it down to where it meets. Now typically when I create a banner, I just try to find all the different assets that I'm gonna want. I typically go to Google, try to find transparent images obviously. And if you can't find a certain image that is transparent, I'm gonna show you quickly how to get an image out of a background. So I'm just gonna quickly do that by just going ahead and dragging these jagged mountains so I'm just gonna go ahead and just drag this all the way to the bottom, just above the template. So there are different ways to cut out, let's say these mountains from the clouds and from the background right here. One extremely helpful way is we're just gonna go to our magic wand tool right here. And this is a way in case you're trying to cut something out that is an entirely different color than its background. So you can just go ahead and click. And as you can see, it'll select these pixels right here. And let's say you go ahead and right click rasterize. You can just go ahead and press delete and it'll delete that selected area. So we can go ahead, control Z, go back. And let's say you wanna select everything. So you can hold the shift button and keep selecting more pixels. But let's say that tool isn't working out for you and it keeps selecting what you actually wanna keep. We can go ahead and select this pen tool right here. We can go around and outline these mountains from the clouds in the background. So I can just go ahead and click, create a point. We can click again, create this point right here. And let's say you wanna create a curve right here. So you can click, hold, and create a curve like so. One helpful tip while you're doing this, at least if you're making curves, is to only have points right after a sharp curve. So you would only want to have a point right here, right after that sharp curve. Now, typically when I'm trying to outline something with this pen tool, I find that having less detail is better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select this area right here. So we've got this selected area right here. This is the only area that we wanna keep. So if you wanna keep the entire mountain, we would actually keep going. So all you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure this shape is below the Jagged Mountains layer right here. Go to the Jagged Mountains layer, right click and go to Clipping Mask. This will create a clipping mask and basically whatever shape you have below this is what it will keep. So I just pretty much just showed you guys this as a demonstration, but I'm gonna go ahead and right click and unclip this mask right here and just go ahead and delete this shape because I'm gonna do it a different way. What I'm gonna do is kind of erase it and sort of blend this background into the space background that we're gonna have for this banner. So what I'm gonna do, and you can pretty much just search whatever you want into Google, but I found this wallpaper in Google and I just typed in planet ring wallpaper and this came up. I'm just gonna right click, rasterize this planet, go to our eraser tool right here. Make sure we're at a high size and we can just click on a different brush right here and make sure our size is all the way up. Opacity I'm gonna put at about 30 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and start clicking. And as you can see, obviously the more clicks, the darker it will become. So let's say we wanna keep the light source coming in from the left like it is on the Death Star. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we're clicked on whatever we wanna change, the AT Walker for instance. Right click, duplicate the layer right here. Make sure it's on top and then just right click again, clipping mask, go to our paintbrush tool, make sure we're on black color right here. Make sure we're on soft light right here and we can just go ahead and change the size and change the brush to pretty light. Change the size to probably something a little higher, maybe something like that. I'm also gonna make sure my opacity is pretty low. So I'm gonna probably put it at about 25%. And you can just basically start creating a certain shadow on this side, a certain shadow effect. And we can do the same thing. We can just flip these to where we have white and do the same thing on the top. If we go ahead and just click on this eye tool right here. We can actually see what was before and what we changed right there. And I think that looks a whole lot better, a whole lot more in sync. So I'm just gonna go ahead and merge both of these layers right here so that this doesn't get lost. So now we've got this layer right here. So with our Death Star, I'm gonna go ahead and right click, go to blending options and create an outer glow of four and 130. And I'm just gonna change this to white. And I'm just gonna go ahead and unclick this eye so that we got our Jagged Mountains again. And make sure we got our Jagged Mountains selected. Go to the Eraser tool and just go ahead and just start erasing this. This one's gonna be a lot larger and that's probably one of my big, biggest suggestions for you guys when creating banners is to create depth of field by making different objects larger or smaller. What else we can do is we can go ahead and just drag in let's say fog, resize it, make sure we're holding shift and just put it over here. Now, one thing I will say that looks off about this banner is that nothing really coexists. This AT Walker doesn't have the same color theme as this planet. What we're gonna do to change that is we're gonna go to layer, new adjustment layer and color balance. Make sure it is at the highest layer, but below these two shape layers but pretty much the highest layer. And a good rule of thumb, let's say you wanna make your banner blue theme, like I will be doing. A good rule of thumb is changing the red and green to where it's below blue. So you wanna put blue a little higher than green and red. And you can go to shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we can just go around and select these. So highlights, we're gonna make our highlights pretty blue. And what I could do with this fog right here is I can go ahead and go to image adjustments, brightness, and we can change the brightness to where this kind of just pops up a little more and go to the pen tool. And what I can do is I can go ahead and start out where the gun starts right here, just so that we can get the proper angle. And I think that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna make it pretty thick on this side and have a single point on this side right here. Make sure our fill is what we want. So I'm gonna put it at light blue that kind of matches this color theme. Right click, blending options, and I'm gonna just add an outer glow of white and change this a little lower. Now once you are happy with your finished product, you can go to file and you can actually save this as a Photoshop file. I would suggest doing that so that it saves all your different layers and such. So you can go ahead and save that as well as a Photoshop file and it'll go ahead and save at the bottom right here. You can also file, export as a PNG and you're gonna to want to make sure it's 2560 by 1440, the quality all the way up, and just go ahead and save that. I'm gonna just quickly show you guys how to actually get your banner changed. So you can actually go to your channel page right here, click on this camera icon right here, and simply just drag your banner from your desktop over here, and it should come up to the right size if you've done everything right. As you can see, this is what your banner will look like on a TV, mobile device, you've got your socials on both sides, and desktop. So with that being said, it's been your boy Havoc here. I hope to see you guys in future tutorials, and uh, I'm out. Peace.